All right, so here we are with the little package that could. This thing was purchased back in the beginning of February. First delivery attempt was the 19th of February, and I forgot about it until yesterday, uh, which was the 23rd of March, 24th of March. Um, so I went to the old post office this morning, and sure enough, they still had it. Uh, turns out that it came from Kiev, Ukraine. So, here we go with opening it. I gotta admit, I went ahead and popped open the box on the back. So, let's pull that out. Let's see how much that weighs. Let me get the scale here. I doubt that plastic weighs a whole lot. This is supposed to be 2.4 pounds or 1,090 grams. 1,109 grams, 1.109 kilograms. Maybe that's for the packaging. So, okay, so, so far so good. This all looks like it's flat packs, four-sided flat packs, which I cannot believe that, because it was not in the description as such, but let's see. I'm a little hopeful that that is the case. So we'll just unwrap this here. Wow. Not sure how this was wrapped up this way, but all the little metal legs were left on these things. And as a result, stick them to the plastic. Look at that. Looks like one lone little two legged IC. It's just plastic, throw it away. And look at this. Almost solid, thin flat packs. I'm going to count these up now and organize them. So I went to Lowe's and I bought a garden torch and an extension adapter to go into my propane tank. I feel like I've been wasting a whole lot of propane just by trying to use my smelting furnace torch. So I'm just going to try to burn these chips manually and see how it goes. This is another 25% of the chips from Victor in Ukraine. I don't know if I can burn all of these at once. So I've got double that again. I'm just gonna start with that for now. I've also got some leftovers from the first batch. Um, The wires are still on there. I'm just going to throw them all in. Not the best approach or the cleanest approach, but um, it'll do. I'm 
definitely not getting 100%. I'm not exactly sure how to get 100% yet, and I want to make progress. So, it's just, I've still got a few small bits of chips in there. It doesn't really amount to much. set of chips that are going to go in to the ball mill. It's important that I show you guys as many steps as I can because one, it's really easy to forget to record some of those stuff. And two, when I'm watching a lot of those videos online, I have a lot of questions about, oh, what just happened there or what just happened there? Because something was different and they didn't explain it all right I have a little bit left to put in there I'm gonna put the cap back on this and shake it up to see if I can maybe lower it a little bit I see I got some little burning I could have done on that one I don't want to spill so I'll put the chips in here like so If you use this kind, you gotta kind of halfway line it up, give it a little bit of squeeze, and it'll get right on there really nicely. Cover the lid, kind of like that, push that down nice and tight, and I'll tighten this down. And always pick it up and just give it a good squeeze. I don't want loosening and falling apart. All right, and it's gonna go on the tumbler. In case you're wondering, this is the tumbler. And because it's got the balls inside there, it's the ball milling these things. I put a, a, heavy, a heavy container here on one side so it doesn't walk across the table on me. And I put a distilled water on the inside so it doesn't have to walk across that way. It doesn't ever seem to walk this direction, so I'm okay that way. All right, here's the ashes from the other freshly milled chips. I'm gonna, just going to drop these ashes in this pot. Here's my 
wires container. I'm just going to dump all these in here. Here's the second grouping of Victor's Ukraine chips. These are all the four-sided flat packs. <clears throat> I only tumbled these for 12 hours, so hopefully this will be okay. Also, the other These, I, I tried to, I tried to incinerate these in a different pan, and I swear they didn't incinerate as well. So I'm gonna go back to the other pan. I'm gonna dump all this in here. to sift through here. Oh, look at that. These incinerated really nicely. These are bound for the incineration process. I'm gonna put, from the other pan, I'm gonna put the last 25% of the chips in here, and then I'm gonna dump that in the other pan to see if it will incinerate better. And then we'll be ready to start doing our gravity separation with water. No reason to suspect they're any different than the other ones, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. Yep, I hear very little hitting this. Just a few pieces of iron. It's gonna take a lot of acids to get that out. All right, now that's bound for the incinerator. And we're gonna put a new set of chips in here, the last set of chips in here. And then soon we'll be ready to hit these with some acids. All right, next batch of chips going on. We're gonna start these covered up. All right, <clears throat> all of my green chips are in here. <clears throat> I'm gonna add some water to that, and then I'm gonna rinse all this stuff out and add it to there as well. All right, here's my setup here. I've got my ashed chips in the white bucket. I've got my water rinse and overflow here in this yellow, in this orange bucket. Um, there's a, I've got a pickle jar in there that holds the initial drop of the ash when it fills and overflows hopefully any gold that would have flown over from the original gravity separation will sink down to the bottom of that jar and then um, I will 
rinse that jar out after a while and see if I can collect any additional gold from there. And this blue bucket is just, just the water that I'm going to use. I've got some Jet Dry here in this little white ramekin. And what I'll do with that is once I pour the water into the white bucket, I will put a little drop of Jet Dry on top of that water to break the surface tension and get anything that might be floating on top to sink into the water. Give it a good mix. All right, here we go. The steam that's coming off of here is just because I'm using some of it's dust, but most of it's steam. I'm using warm and hot water. You can see in the top here, the there's some floaties. The this ashy mixture is rather anhydrous, so it's not going to want to mix with that water very well. But we'll just gently give it a stir with the stir rod. There's some sort of a film on the top. It does not look like oil. I'm assuming that's just super thin ash. All right, let's give this just a little spritz up. So this jet dry will break up that, that top layer of stuff. And I'll continue to break it up here. You don't want to use too much jet dry because it will create um, bubbles. And the bubbles Old gold and other stuff in them. What I was going to do, but I'm going to try to get as many of these floaties off the top of the water surface as I can. So a new bucket of water. Stirred this stuff here. A little more jet dry. I'll have less and less of that oily stuff at the top as we go through here. This is starting to look much better. A lot of metal in there still. Crazy. Next 
expecting two grams out of this one kilogram of chips. looking so far. Let me get some more water. Most of what seems to be left is the broken up, tumbled silicon dyes that I really wish I felt comfortable pulling out before I ball milled the rest of the, the carbon, but I don't want to miss anything, so. I don't do that. I'm thinking I just might heat this back up in the pan and see if I can sift some of this metal back out of there. Let's do that. All right, <clears throat> all right, I changed my mind. <coughs> Rather than putting these uh, pins or the, uh, the copper and everything from those chips, back in the frying pan and using gas and stuff. Um, I'm just gonna heat them up on the, in this tall form two liter beaker. And once I heat them up and get them super bone dry, I will then go through again and I will put them through the sifter. All right, I am just going to shake this stuff up, let the, smaller particles sift down. I don't know how in the world I got so much metal in this, but all I can think of is somewhere along the lines I just didn't do any kind of pre-screening in one of these. So I am literally just pulling it out with my hand. So I'm just shaking it down. I'm gonna pull it out like this. I'm gonna dump it all in here. And then I'm gonna bosh all this stuff again. But for now, I'm just gonna pull this stuff out as much as I can. And then I will um, sift it. I don't wanna get any of the actual ball milled silicon chips because I don't wanna take the risk of capturing any of the gold in there but I do want to get all that stuff out. So I'm just going to get as much as I can by hand, and then I'm going to put the rest of it through my good old classifier. All right, here's as much as I wanted to do. I'm going to put them through the classifiers. And then what goes through here is going to go right back into the same beaker. And I'm going to start with hydrochloric acid tonight. All right. There's still a good amount of metal in there, but it's far better than it was. So I'm just going to put this back in here. I'm going to give this a rinse out, so I'm sure nothing is left in there. hydrochloric acid to this. From my previous, I'm gonna dump that hydrochloric acid in here and put on the heat and 
see what we can get. Okay, I don't know if I recorded that or not, but I poured the hydrochloric acid from this beaker into this one. It's about 800 milliliters, and I am going to turn the heat on, and we're going to let this cook. I got my my blocks and my makeshift holder in place so it doesn't blow off in the wind or boil off when this thing begins to bubble. It'll more than likely be like a day or so that I've got this thing on the hot hydrochloric acid. Okay, this has been on the boil. This has been on heat and air bubbling through it for two days now. I am going to top off the hydrochloric acid. I want to cover it back up. I'm bringing it back up to about a thousand milliliters to let everything kind of mix together. Um, I'm going to take it off the heat and in maybe 20 minutes or so I'll stop that, that aeration and I'll let it settle out. Hopefully all the non-gold metallics are out of there by now and um, I'll do a stainless chloride test, make sure it's got no gold or any other precious metals in the, in the mix. We are now going to filter this liquid, the hydrochloric acid, into this flask, slowly pouring it over. Oof, it looks really saturated. And that means that we're going to need to do another hydrochloric acid boil, and that's fine. I knew I was signing up for a good amount of time that was going to take to do this when I decided to use hydrochloric acid instead of nitric acid. I think we're just going to pause this a little bit before again. Get a shot of that, <clears throat> of the filtration process. Filtration is starting to slow down a little bit as that filter is getting loaded up. I finally put a clamp on my suction, on my suction pump, because it was just the screws broke loose against the plastic housing, and it was just making a whole lot of rattling noise. So I finally found something that I could squeeze it with enough to to quell that rattling. Oof, that is thick. Next pour. All right, we're gonna give that about an hour to settle. All right, I'm gonna give this one more hydrochloric acid boil, just because I mean, it looks clean to me, but I'm gonna put about 200 milliliters in there and we're gonna turn the heat on, let this cook for a little bit. Came out this morning, found the liquid had all but evaporated overnight. So I just topped it off at 300 milliliters. This is after I've boiled in hydrochloric acid again for uh, another 24 hours.
it here is after I've boiled it for the second 24 hours in hydrochloric acid. This is the first hot water rinse. I hope that shows up. There's my cold at the bottom of my beaker from the one kilogram of square flat pack. Looks pretty nice. That was a clean filter. So what I'm doing now, I'm trying with these hot water washes, I'm trying to get as much of that copper off as I can. It's looking pretty good. objective here is to try to get as much of that copper off of there as we can from my hydrochloric acid soaks. That gold settles down really quickly. That's awesome. All right, next stop for this is I'm going to add some about 400 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and then I'm going to start dropping in nitric. Probably four milliliters or so, and then heat this to about 90 degrees centigrade, and let it cook for a little bit, make sure we dissolve all that gold, and then we'll add a little bit more nitrate until the reaction stops. is on and let's heat this up to 90 degrees it's currently sitting at 80 degrees Celsius so I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of nitric acid it looks like about two milliliters vigorous reaction already starting. We're going to let that do its thing for at least an hour and a half. All right, it's been about an hour and 35 hour and 40 minutes and looks like the reaction's pretty much stopped. I'm going to add some more muriatic acid and some more nitric acid and see if we can start the reaction back up again. So I'm going to add about a hundred milliliters. Now we're going to add some more nitric. You see the, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the, the temperature dropped back down to about 68 degrees Celsius. So we're going to let that heat back up. When it gets about 90 and we show that we're still not having any more reaction, I uh, will consider that done. Uh, I was 
do a quick standards test of this. Oh yeah, that's good. This is done. I'm going to pour this into the two liter beaker and then evaporate some of it off. it and we'll do a gold drop hopefully that'll be there tonight or tomorrow morning all right might as well start recording so i messed up i left this morning around quarter of nine and i left my large two liter beaker on here on the hot plate uh evaporating away more of the liquid i had about 300 milliliters of of ar in there well I came back to find that the entire thing had dried up. It looked like this. This is not it, but it looked that, that same type of consistency, except it all looked like it was gold. So I panicked and threw some hydrochloric acid in there really quickly. The hydrochloric acid did dissolve some materials, but not everything. So then I just added two milliliters of nitric acid to this, and I've got it back on the heat. I've transferred everything to a smaller 500 milliliter beaker and we're going to see if I can just dissolve everything here and then just work out of this 500 milliliter beaker. I think it's all recoverable. I just panicked for a minute so I shouldn't have done that. But anyway there it is and I'm outside so lots of fumes being produced. I'm going to go back inside now. All right <clears throat> I'm going to do a little round of testing. I've got my test strip right here, and the first thing I'm going to do is just test again to make sure that I've got golden solution. My solution is still hot. Positive, positive stannous chloride test. Creeping up with a little bit of yellow. I uh, understand that means there's some palladium in there possibly as well. Now I'm going to do a pH test. I'm going to compare and see what pH we're sitting at. Looks to me like we're at a 1. this temperature and then we're going to add some sulfamic acid to it. Let's give it some time to increase temp. All right we're about 85 degrees Celsius. Doesn't seem to want to be one any higher. Maybe my, maybe my hot plate's not doing its job. Let's go ahead and add the sulfamic. Getting the expected reaction out of that. 
adding just a little bit at a time. Super small amounts. Can't imagine this would take off on me and boil over. I should have a catch plate for sure. Reaction slowing down significantly, but it's still happening. I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit. Maybe this next small little addition will be it. sitting on the bottom. Sulfamic acid was added, water was added. Let's take this down off the heat. I'm not gonna take it down, I'm just gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna do another pH test. Too. From what I understand now, from what this cool, any leads or silver chloride will drop out of here as it cools. When it is totally cool, we'll filter it. And after we filter it, then we will drop the gold with sodium metabisulfite that will raise the pH level to somewhere between two and four, which will allow the SO2 to be formed and the gold to drop out of solution. Okay, we'll be back when we're ready for that step. Got the suction hooked up. Turn that 
on. Let that start. seal there either just in case likely wouldn't happen but uh, since it's so windy we're going to cover this up and just let this continue to vacuum for the next I don't know 20 25 minutes filtration is all done <clears throat> we'll take our funnel out of our beaker Expecting about two grams of gold. So I'm gonna zero this out. Not really stuff that with the sodium metal sulfide, but that's okay. Black. 
wow, that was fast. But I see I still have some at the top that did not go into solution. So I'm going to get some more sodium metabolite sulfide together. One second. So this is really good to see. I guess this is what it looks like when, when the gold hasn't completely dropped. There's definitely a layer on top. Right, it's been about 10 minutes. I didn't get a chance to do it this immediately. So I am going to start this again. And this time I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Hope this is coming out. I'll see if that works. I forgot to do a stannous chloride test. I don't see any color change in that. Looks like we got all the gold. heat. Here's my watch glass. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on there. All right, here we are after about 35 minutes being on the heat. It's a pretty decent drop. I mean, it's there's a lot that still has to settle out of there yet. I still smell the SO2. So I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm going to put it somewhere out of the wind. Here's my gold drop. It's been about 18 hours since I did a gold drop and I haven't had this lid off yet. I haven't looked down inside it yet. Pretty excited to see what that looks like. Looks pretty interesting. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. Some floaties on top. I'm gonna see if I can spray them down. Yep, and just that little bit of spray will has pushed that, that gold. I can see it dropping right now. We'll give that just a minute to settle. All right, here's my setup. I have my thousand milliliter beaker because I'm gonna do some hot water washes into this. 500 milliliter beaker with a gold drop in it. And I'm hoping that we can catch this on pretty good video. I'm gonna lift this up so you can look down inside. So I slowly pour off the gold. Look at that gold falling down all like that. That's nice. That's what you want to see. You want to see your gold sticking together like that. out of the way. I'm going to start with our first hot water wash. I'm going to try to get the stuff that fell on the sides off the sides. see some gold floating over the top and that's okay I'm gonna come back through and boil this off anyway let's give it another hot water wash Maybe try to 
break that up a little bit. I gotta say, it's gold. That gold is looking pretty good. If you recall, we soaked it in hydrochloric acid before we even dissolved it the first time. So that gold was looking pretty good before we even dissolved it. We got a lot of those base metals off. Settle. Okay, right. now we're going to take this container, we're going to take this gold, and we're going to put it on a hydrochloric acid boil for, I don't know, a couple hours. Be back with you when I do that. All right, here we go. We're going to start our hot water. Hydrochloric acid boils. Not hot water. We're going to start our hydrochloric acid boils. There you go. And we'll see this back in probably two hours. All right. This gold's been on for approximately two hours. It's looking pretty good. I see absolutely no color change whatsoever. So I really don't see a need to. So I really don't see a need to continue with any additional boils. I'm just going to go ahead and filter this and take it straight to the crucible. There we go. I'm going to pour this off. I should have my gloves on now. Really solid. I'm gonna do that one more time. Off the camera. Alright, let's go ahead and capture this in the filter paper.
All right, let's take this over to the boiling hydrochloric acid and get it cleaned up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add some hydrochloric acid to this small 50 milliliter beaker. And we're gonna turn on the heat. And we're gonna just let this boil for about a half an hour or so.